Hey everybody, it's Christine, and today I've got a new layout showcasing the Cozy Days collection from Simple Stories, which is an absolutely beautiful fall collection. And then I'm also continuing my series where I am working with the same sketch throughout the month of October. This one comes from Page Maps, and so I will be continuing to work with that today. So this collection, Cozy Days, has some features in it that are newer to Simple Stories collections, including these chipboard frames that you see me working with and some puffy stickers. As this sketch calls for two pictures, I wanted to take advantage of these beautiful chipboard frames and use them on the layout. So you can see that first one is a vertical frame and worked perfectly for the taller picture. And then the second one is going to be a horizontal frame and smaller, and I'll use that. I actually cropped in on a different picture and turned it into a horizontal picture to make it work. So a smaller one next to a bigger one, which steps away from the sketch a little bit, but still stays with the idea of two pictures. And you can get a, a view of how I am attaching those chipboard frames right now. I just added some adhesive to them and then put them on lightly to make sure I was happy with the placement. And that way I can pull back up if I wanted to. Um, you can see for that one, I also used the frame to cut down the picture a little bit um to make sure i got the right size i didn't want to do that without measuring that out first now i have a general idea of where i'm going to go with the patterned papers on this but not an exact idea <laughs> um i know i really love how my pictures look up against this maroon patterned paper but it's super busy so i'm going to have to do something to calm that down in the rest of my layout now the sketch calls for a horizontal strip across the middle of the layout where your pictures and journaling land and so this maroon paper is perfect for it um, but I just am kind of playing with what what is gonna look best against that um, and not be totally overwhelming and so you're getting a picture right now of the behind the scenes as I sort through papers that were in the collection that I thought might work now I'm particularly drawn to the tag paper and this is the third simple stories layout in a row um, as far as their newest collections go, that I am drawn to the tag paper. They're including it in all their collections now, and apparently I love it. <laughs> so the back side of this is tags with icons and words. The front side is blank tags that has just light grid markings or subtle patterns on the actual tag part. So what I'm thinking is that I wanna put a row of the tags for my top border and a row of the tags for my bottom border. Now, again, I'm sorting through what that looks like and how I'm gonna make that work. Although I like the placement right now, I feel like the tags are a little too close to the patterned paper and don't help with the busyness issue. Um, so good, but not great. The other thing is I wanna work in maybe another pop of color without adding too much busyness. And so I'm just kind of trying to figure out how I can do that. Now you can see I'm definitely drawn to this really pretty golden yellow. It is just a very traditional fall color. It looks like a fall leaf. Um, and it is really pretty. And I think that it will work well for adding color without adding pattern to the base of my layout. Now this one actually comes in one of the Color Vibe cardstock kits and it's a cardstock kit that coordinates with the fall colors and I will link you to that um, within, down below. Um, so it's not part of the actual Cozy Days collection, but it's meant to accompany the Cozy Days collection, if you will. So um, it has a slight pattern to it, monochromatic dots, but nothing like you can barely see it on camera here, right? Um, you can, And you can see it does bring in though, it brings in the chipboard frame really well and just adds a nice punch of color, but not busyness. And for whatever reason, I feel like the white was too stark of a contrast. So I feel like this is a really good setup. Now I'm gonna go back now and I'm gonna cut out that extra row of tags cause I don't wanna waste it underneath. Um, and I'm going to just use one at the top of the layout and one at the bottom. And you can see I've got an extra sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock right there that I am going to use to add my layers onto. Um, I did look kind of carefully. Did I want to use 
like which row of tags did I want to use of the three, um, which two of those three, or did I want to use my second copy of the tag paper and have the exact same row on top and bottom? I did not do that. <laughs> when I tried it with the exact same row top and bottom, it was just way too symmetrical um, and just did not work. So I'm gonna opt for two different ones and the ones that I just felt like looked the best with the colors that I had within the layout. I do avoid unintentionally avoid using much of the blue in this collection on my layout. There was no reason that I avoided it. It just didn't happen to land in there with the colors that I was gravitating to. That said, it is a beautiful addition to this collection and part of what I think really makes it stand out on top of the light pink that you can see on the left hand side there is just a really rich um, blue that's kind of between royal and navy and has a tinge of gray to it. It's just a gorgeous color and not one that you see in fall collections a lot. So between that and the pink, they really take this fall collection to a unique color scheme level and I love it. I uh, didn't even put it away on my desk because I just want to keep playing with it. Um, so I, I wanted to point that out so that you don't get the idea um, that this is because I did kind of gravitate more towards the traditional colors here, although I do have quite a bit of the pink in as well. Um, I didn't want you to miss that aspect of this collection because I think it's a really nice addition to it. So assembling everything on my base and then we will continue onward with the sketch. The sketch calls for a large circular element or large element up there underneath the picture on the right hand side. And so I am going to use this green patterned paper, which is still kind of busy, but I don't feel like it's too busy, especially with my yellow mixed in there. Um, and I like the way it brings out the green in the frames in both that squirrel icon that you see down there and the flower. Um, it helps bring those colors together. So I like that as an option. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is actually look at my journaling. So you saw I flipped over the package there and just kind of looked to see what was there. And this is gonna work perfectly for a journaling spot. It's just a bunch of cute fall themed words. Um, and you can see it's a really, cool tag with the spiral bound top and the torn bottom. It just is a really cute one. And so that'll be perfect. Um, as I've mentioned lots of times on my channel, I tend to do my personal journey, journaling about the moment on the back side of my layout, just because my layouts are all over the internet. Um, and so that is one way I can keep my pretty public hobby still private. And so I take the chance on that with things like this to add a journaling element and a word element to the layout. Um, and like I said, I don't always do that, but I do tend towards that more often than not. Um, and I, I know a lot of you have asked, where's your journaling? Do you do journaling? And so I like to answer that regularly because I don't want you to think I'm leaving out the uh, word part of the layout, the story, <laughs> the story that's not in pictures, right? Um, so carrying on now, because I've got the two chipboard frames, the second one, I'm going to overlap it just a bit. And so I need to add a little bit of dimension to it so that I can not having it laying at a wonky angle. And so I am going to put a little bit of crafty foam tape and this crafty foam tape is 108 feet long it comes from scrapbook adhesives by 3l and it is a little bit thinner in height so it's perfect for situations like this where you don't have the full height of normal 3d adhesive as i don't in that chipboard frame but you do have a little height and so it allows for you to add just a smidge of height to your elements um, now I've got that all put together and you can see already, I've got a really very eye pleasing layout, but we're not going to stop there. There's going to be layers that are going to just keep coming and coming. Um, I had so much fun assembling all the different layers of this layout. Now, first thing I wanna do is I wanna pull in some more of that green. And so I'm going to uh, cut out a couple more green circles, both with a punch as well as a metal die and use those to create a visual triangle 
uh, surrounding my pictures. Now, kind of straying from the sketch at this point, but I, I do stay true to the sketch on probably about 75% of this, um, which, you know, some days I'm like right on there and other days I go way far away from it. And today it's, it's pretty close. So my title is landing pretty much where they had it on the sketch. And I'm going to just use this word fall. Um, I debated on a lot of different titles cause there are some great options within this. Ultimately my decision came down to, I wanted one that had the white background or off white background because I've got so many patterns and so many colors going here, anything else was gonna get lost. And so having that white background on that chipboard piece that says fall was perfect. Now I'm gonna build up some clusters and there are naturally already clusters built into the chipboard frame. So I am not gonna run away from that. I am going to build on that and use those as my jumping off point. So, from that, I am, you can see I've got already the frame part on the left side of the title and I'm kind of building out my title to have a little more to it. And I'm going to combine um, ephemera and cardstock stickers and the 6x8 sticker book all in here to build out these clusters. Maybe even a little chipboard too, um, but I am going to kind of try and stick within the same elements. So I'm not gonna add in like a whole bunch more animals or that kind of thing. The squirrel is good enough. So like I am gonna stick with the pumpkins and leaves and try and just find enough of those that are just right in size and that stuff to fit in with those clusters. One of the things I try to do when I create clusters is have is some something that's the same element or at least the same color within each. So you see already, I've got the green circle as the base for each of my clusters. Then I'm gonna add pumpkins and I'm gonna add leaves. And I tried to add those into each one if possible, if I have the product to do that. Um, in my mind, having it in all the groupings helps to unify the whole layout. If I can't do that, I try and bring in the same color. The other thing I try to do is like, if my pumpkins are all, or if I have two ephemera pumpkins say, I try and make sure that like the third one I'm gonna use if it comes from stickers or whatever is still pretty much the same color scheme. There can be a pretty big difference if you go between chipboard, stickers, ephemera, um, foam stickers, the look changes. And so making sure there's still a unified look, I don't wanna throw in one big foam sticker in there and it's the only foam sticker on the layout and it doesn't make any sense. Um, and so I try to keep my elements unified in that respect. I also try and keep the size in mind. So if I've got like on the title up there, I've got that bigger one on the right side. So I wanna add a smaller one now on the left side. I don't want it to overwhelm the title. I want it to complement the title. Um, but I also don't want it to be so teeny tiny that it looks silly. I think you can get a good visual picture right now of how those different pumpkins start to tie things together. Um, and when, you know, you have to just kind of decide, eh, enough's enough. I'm also gonna bring in some hearts to it. Um, and right now I'm just playing with where I want those to land. Uh, probably the biggest challenge for me on the layout today was the title. Um, First of all, like I said earlier, deciding what to use as the title, but then building around it was challenging not to get so much that it took away from the rest of the layout, um, but to, to give it just enough that it still draws your eye in. Um, I'm gonna also add in a banner down at the bottom and I don't use a lot of banners on layouts, so I was kind of pumped that this one looked good and I could make use of it. The last product I'm going to include, I want to make sure and point out because this is new. Look at the back of the Brad's now. I was so excited because I was looking around my desk for a poker to stab the hole so I could use some Brad's on this because I really felt like the metal was going to be a nice compliment. And then I remembered, oh wait, I don't think I need it anymore. And lo and behold, they've taken the look of their Brad's with the metal outline and the epoxy center 
and made them into stickers. So you still get the look without all the extra work, <laughs> without the risk of stabbing yourself as well. <laughs> so total win in my book. Um, so excited that they have started to produce them this way. And that is about it. So super long video for me. I don't usually go this long, but I think you probably get the idea that I am excited about this collection and excited about the new products within this collection and lots of little details. Hopefully you picked up some new things on clusters and all that. So thank you so much for stopping by today. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you aren't already a subscriber here. And we will see you again tomorrow, actually, with another new layout. We'll see you next time.